Hello everyone. The purpose of this video is to explore a little bit more about our personalised learning model which we introduced at the end of 2017. In no way is our model intended to clone anybody or dictate how practice should be in the classroom, but it's really more a conversation piece to provoke a dialogue and conversation in school between colleagues just about what makes really great practice in a classroom. We developed the personalised learning model through talking to lots and lots of people around the organisation, including all the head teachers of Cognita Schools. And what we really wanted to do was to get their feedback about what they saw as great teaching and learning in the classroom. We also then looked at the best international research around the quality of teaching and learning in order to make sure that the things that our teachers and our leaders talked about dovetailed alongside the things that global research showed. And we put that together to form our personalised learning model. So because of the Cognita way and using the term personalised learning, over the last year or so, lots of schools have said, well, what do we mean by it? Do I mean the same as the school down the road? Do I mean the same as the teacher that teaches in the classroom next door to me? So that's why we're having the conversation, just so that we can have a dialogue. And what I really hope after today, my ask of you, is would you have that dialogue with your team back in school? Because I think it's a really rich one, and it's probably the most important things that, one of the most important things we can talk about in school. I think the other reason it's important to have a shared view within our family about personalised learning is it enables us to share, because I think we're much stronger as a family if we share things together. The DSL conference yesterday, fantastic example of that, 90 safeguarding leaders in a room, brilliant first of all, really energised day. The best thing, the content was great, the best thing was the sharing in the room, and I know there were quite a few colleagues that were there here today. The collegiality, the sharing, that helps us get better, and I think if we have a shared model about personalised learning, that helps us be better. The final thing is, is that sometimes people outside Cognita say, well, what does great teaching look like? What do you think it means? And we need a way to be able to articulate that to the outside world. So that's, that's what we're talking about this morning. Just tell you a bit about the process I went through in order to, to get this thinking. I did, I did two things. In um, about, I think, end of September, maybe October, I sent a note to all of our head teachers and principals globally in, in all of our schools around the world and said, what does personalised learning mean to you? You know, what do you think it is? What, what elements do you have? And everybody uh, had a response back from every principal, sent, sent, sent emails back, and we collated them and we did a bit of an exercise around pulling themes out of those. What was amazing, there was a very high degree of overlap between what people said. And actually, the, 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 the number one um, theme was consistent in about over 90% of schools. I can't remember the exact number now, but over 90% of schools. So I came up with some ideas from within our family, but what I then did is I looked at um, about 10 pieces of the biggest global research um, that tells us about what makes the difference in the classroom, and I put them together. Now, what was great was that there was a massive overlap between what our school principals thought and the research. The reason I'm telling you that is what I'm sharing with you, it's not, I haven't just plucked it out of my head or had a few conversations with people and thought, oh, that'll do. Um, it's come from a, a, a wide variety of people. Underpinning this is my view, you can choose to disagree with this, but underpinning my view around personalised learning and what we want in classroom is, is a mindset issue. And I have a very strong view that if you tell people what to do, number one, they either don't do it, number two, they either get really cross with you, or number three, they do it but only when you're looking. And then when they close the door, because teachers are mostly quite subversive as characters, so then they close the door and they do what the hell they like once you're not there. So, so it doesn't work. So actual pr um, prescription doesn't work. Put that into cognita, yeah? Your schools in this room are all so different. The cognita schools are fab because they're different, but it means that you can't give a rule book. It just doesn't work. And that's in Europe. Think what it's like in Thailand and Vietnam and Chile and Brazil. It just doesn't work. So what we've got to do if we want to work together, I probably have some principles about how we work together, because principles are more powerful than prescription. And that's really what we're talking about. Because I think underpinning that for me is that if we have a rule book, and if you say to teachers, this is what you have to do, all that happens is they stop thinking. 
They stop engaging and they stop thinking what's right for the children in my classroom. Because teachers need to be able to make professional judgments every day. That's the definition of a professional. Somebody that can make a judgment on the hop, okay? And that's what teaching's about. It's the relationship between, between adults and between children. And we want what, what's described in research as teacher agency. People to feel empowered about making good decisions for their children. Okay, so that's, that's what we're talking about. So, personalized learning then. We came up with this definition. First of all, personalized learning has to be about high quality teaching in the classroom. Okay, bit of a no-brainer. Don't think anybody will disagree with that. You might, we'll have a conversation, you know, we, we'll have a chat, but I, I think probably most people agree with that bit. Underpinning high quality teaching, there's got to be some use of either assessment or other evidence, okay? So we've got to make sure that teachers are using assessment data and other stuff that they know. And the reason I call it stuff is that it's not just, you know, a standardized score. It's about what happened to that child that morning? What mood have they come into school in? Has their gerbil died that day? All of those things that we know as a teacher make a really big difference to children's lives. And then, we, we sometimes need to do individual things. I'm not suggesting you personalize it and individualize it for every child every day. Can't do it, not possible in a classroom. But sometimes we have to do individual interventions where our teaching isn't working for a child. Okay, um, and, and, and you do that routinely in your school with, with lots of children for, lot, for lots of things. And then the outcome of that is hopefully when we get it right, we get great progress for our children, for our students in school. So it's the combination of the great teaching, using evidence, intervening where something's not happening, and then we get good progress for our students. So when we talk in, with Incognita about personalized learning or great teaching, that's what we're talking about, is that sense of good quality, day in, day out teaching in a classroom. And do you know what? You know better than anybody, that's hard work. <laughs> that is not easy to get right for all of the children in your classroom. That's a tall order in itself. So what we then did was, was came up with a model, and I just want to describe it to you, then give you a bit of an opportunity to have a quick chat about it. So we, we talked about what are the elements of personalized learning, okay, under that definition. And when we did that exercise and asked our school heads and principals what they thought, the number one thing that came out from over 90% of people was that the heart of personalized learning had to be based on good quality relationships in the classroom. You can forget the best teaching in the world if you don't have relationships in the classroom. And I remember learning that really quite early in my career. I remember working with a colleague um, who I'll call Janet, because that was her name, but I won't tell you her surname. Um, but anyway, she was technically, absolutely amazing. Utterly amazing, technically. But actually, she had no relationship with the children. And I remember her helping me a lot to become technically better as a teacher. But when I watched her teach, it was sort of a bit sad because the connection wasn't there. And, and she just didn't have the whole package of stuff. So I, I learned quite a lot about that. So what we're saying is, is culture and relationships really matters. And then the other thing around that is you've got to know about the stuff, your curriculum whatever that is, whether that be British National Curriculum, IB, you've got to know what it is you're trying to deliver and, and where you want students to be. So that's, they're the constants. And then inside that, what we're suggesting is we've got three things that make a difference. You've got the, the, the sense of, I'm going to use this, I'm going to put myself as a teacher now. The, the first thing is, do I know the standard I need my children to be at? So that's the expectations and challenge. Do I actually have a, a, a model in my head that says I know where these students need to be and I know how to stretch them and how do I get them there? Do I then use evidence in the classroom including assessment evidence, in order to make good decisions? Do I use that in order to say, this isn't right for you today, I need to do something different with you? Or that group of students need something different, I need to do an intervention. And then do I vary my teaching approach depending on what those students need? 
Okay? So it's that sense of a, a sort of a quite a flexible, fluid model in a classroom. You know, teachers are just do the same, same thing day in, day out. It tends not to work. Um, and, and that doesn't mean you have to reinvent the wheel, but it's that sense of a, a fluid classroom. So you've got your relationships, you've got your curriculum that wraps around, and then inside that you've got the what I describe as the magic, because I think the center of that Venn diagram is magic. When you see, and you know better than anybody else, you see a great teacher with their children, and it's awe-inspiring. They're the lesson observations where you forget to write anything down. Because actually you think, this is just so amazing, I would want my child in this classroom now. Because, and, and, and what I often think when I'm in those lessons is, crikey, I wish I could teach like that. You know, it's just, it's just so amazing, and that's where, that's where the magic happens. So that's what we're suggesting as part of it. What we've then done underneath that, and on your table, you've, you've got a copy of this with that diagram. We've suggested within those three circles of the Venn diagram, what are the important things based on research? Okay, so they're not just plucked out of the head. What are the, what are the biggest researchers around the world saying, these are the things that really make a difference in a classroom? Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'll just give you, um, I'm going to give you only two or three minutes now, but you can continue this conversation later and definitely back in school. My question to you is this, does it make sense? Simple as that. Have a quick chat. Does it make sense? What that model is not trying to do is to say there's one way to teach, because that's crackers. There are lots of people that believe there are, but it, you know, there's, there's no evidence to say that, that that works. What we need to be is research informed, as, as, as I talked about earlier. And the problem in education is that, um, as you well know, it's not very easy to say, if we do that, this will happen. Because very few things in education are simple cause and effect. Because what, you, what we know as, as teachers is that you do some stuff and that can make a difference. But it's very difficult to nail down that it's that thing that makes that outcome. So, so in some ways you have to do some best guess in terms of what's right it, uh, uh, um, through pedagogy. Um, so, so that's what we're tr really trying to do here, is just to be research informed. Um, and what I hope with that model is that it's just a conversation piece. What I can't underline enough, please, 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 do not turn it into a tick list for a lesson observation, because you'll kill it. Okay? And there's, there is a real temptation sometimes with things like that to say, well, we see this, and we see this, and we see this. It's a good lesson. Yeah? And you might have seen this, and this, and this, and there may still be no learning going on. Okay? In fact, you might go in a classroom and see none of those things, and the learning could be fabulous. So you, you're the professionals. You have to make those judgments when, when you're observing teaching and learning in your school. Because I think what this is about, it's about us trying to get at the heart of learning. There's a difference between learning and performance. And a lot of what we see when we go in a classroom is performance. Because it's very difficult for us to assess whether learning is happening, isn't it? Because learning doesn't happen like that, usually. It's messy. It takes time. You have to fall over a few times when you're learning. You have to get back up and go on, and actually often the real test of whether learning has taken place isn't after it's just been taught. Okay? The real test is much later down the line, and if you really want to know whether learning has taken place, you need to check out whether students can apply that in lots of different contexts at a later date. So, you know, what this isn't about is saying, if you do these things, great, sorted, teaching and learning will be fine. It's, it's about that professional dialogue, really. So that's, that's really where we're coming from. So I think the conversation back in school is about whether you could have a sense about whether that feels what should be going on in a classroom. Does it feel right? And could you use it as a model for a dialogue, for a conversation in school, something that you could keep coming back to? Because sometimes models are really helpful for having, having conversations. 
I hope that was really useful for you in terms of understanding more about our personalised learning model. So you've got the three elements. The quality of relationships in the classroom is absolutely fundamental. The quality of the curriculum and then the interaction between teachers and children, the quality of teaching and learning as the things that go together to make the real difference for children. And I hope for you in school what you can do is have a dialogue with your colleagues around what you want to see in terms of quality of teaching and the very best for your children. Thank you.